Hey guys, hi there. We're outside again. As you can see, this is rather a uh, nice path. Let me see whether I can actually get a bit more light on the path. Or maybe it will show up better on the screen. I hope so. See, suddenly it clears up. I don't know. Anyway, um, I was walking here, talking to myself. So I thought I might as well talk to you guys instead. Um, kind of a little witchy check-in progress report in general. Um, it's been a weird couple of weeks, really. Uh, mainly, I think, because of the tumo. So what's happening is that, okay, so I've been on this path for quite a while with the Shakti energy and being on YouTube by itself. sheltered. There will also be a lot more noise, so I'm not sure I'm going to make much sense to you at the moment. Anyway, um, the thing is, what I, what's been happening is I've been doing a lot of drawing. I'm still at uh, my painting and inks and all that. And it's just immense fun. And I sort of just realized um, just now, basically, this, this morning, that, I, that it really actually means something, what I'm doing. It takes me forever to find that out, that what I do actually means something, at least to me, that it's consistent, you know, that it's actually helpful and there's a structure to it. And there's, it by itself has a purpose. It has all this, uh, I suppose, all this artistic fire that just keeps flooding out. Um, a couple of times a week, I sit down with my inks and my paints and crayons and whatever else, you know. And I tend to make three larger, yeah, medium size uh, like A4, slightly bigger uh, size drawings or paintings in a row. So I'm where I spend at least an hour on each. And they're quite pretty. I like them a lot. I also feel uh, it's m marvelous, you know, it's incredible that I'm finally letting myself do this without being critical without, um, you know, being uptight about whether it's good enough or without um, basically having a lot of intellectual control over what I'm doing, where what I used to do was always to, I need an idea first before I can make anything. That's not the case anymore. I just start off somewhere and a lot of what I'm making is basically colors, lines and stripes and bands and, um, and it feels just amazing. It's just so much color and so much freedom in that and it's like a wild kind of a creative process that I've longed for. As I stand here and tell you, I have wanted this for uh, 40 years or so. And I was always in my own face. I was always in my own hair, trying to organize it and control it and prevent <laughs> that, which is actually basically very liberating. So, yeah. So all that is great and it's doing me a lot of good. And it's also kind of weird and sometimes a bit scary and all that, which is fairly, you know, that's fine. It's natural. It's part of the process. On the other hand, uh, there's other things where I find it really difficult that I am emotionally a lot more free in a way. I'm more, um, I'm also, if, if that's possible, even more sensitive than I used to be. 
I tend to get uh, uh, freaked out when things aren't, uh, you know, things aren't fair. And so one of the things that comes out on and on is the talks with dad that I had uh, last year and a lot of things that he's said to me uh, where in the beginning it felt like, okay, so we do have a chance of sort of moderately getting along with each other, at least to some extent, you know, we can exchange information and we can be okay like that. And maybe it was my projection. I was projecting my stuff, of course, yeah. And um, it didn't work out. It turns out that basically, I suppose he didn't want this. And he was too polite in a way <laughs> to tell me so, to tell me to basically sort off and, you know, because it's too much or what. Which would be, which would have been the, the honest thing to do maybe. And he would, he were he wasn't going to do that and instead he'd uh, throw stuff at me and say things that are really hurtful and try to, to see what, how I would react, things like that which is what he always used to do with my mom as well. And um, I still think of him intrinsically, if you like, as a human being who has become this way. Because I don't find it helpful because I'm not exposed anymore. So I'm protected now because I protected myself because I decided that I wasn't going to do it anymore. I'm, I'm not involved directly anymore so I can I hope I can afford to think of him as a person who has become like this for reasons that I don't really know so all that is running around my brain you know basically oh there's a woodpecker it's actually getting quite spring like out here there's the uh, the elder bushes that are all around me here all this Grown, grown up stuff, all these stalks like that. I think most of that is elder or maybe hazelnut. I'm not sure actually, um, because that's elder, but that's dead over there. Anyway, there's lots of there's a bit of green stuff already. Today is um, what is it? Tuesday the 18th. I'm actually glad to be out here with my phone chatting to you guys because I've been sort of cooped up inside a bit. Oh, here's an elder. Here's an elder bush with all sorts of nice green uh, leaves coming out of the of the tree like that. And uh, so it's going to be like that all over over here. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of hiding in here <laughs> away from the path for a bit so I can record my thing at least as far as I'm getting at this point, I want to show you uh, my drawings, the sequel, you know, to that, definitely, uh, because I'm having so much fun with that. It's so and there's a, a two mo thing that I want to do where I'm really comparing, because I've got notes on that quite a lot, um, comparing two mo work and Shakti work, what that is like. So that's gonna, I'm gonna do that sometime soon. Uh, we also did another little book haul where we went to a second-hand book fair and I got um, I got a little booklet about the Violet Flame written by Elizabeth Prophet and um, <laughs> as always when I'm really confused I turn to astrology because it turns out that I looked up this organization that she was a part of and in Holland where I am we don't know anything other than the bits of, you know, I don't know, meditation practice, if that's, if you can call it that, um, about the violet flame, right? And we have no clue, or I had no clue, certainly, about um, the organization that Elizabeth Prophet, Prophet was part of and uh, what that was like and all that. So I found a link 
quite an interesting uh, lo lengthy article that I will uh, stick the link uh, for into in the description as usual so you can have a go at that if you want um, I'm, I'm also kind of I also kind of realized that the reason I know about the violet flame and or uh, the ascended masters to any extent um, is partly uh, because people talk about it uh, in you know like the um, esoteric bookshop that I used to either work at or um, sell incense at or things like that that I was involved with that group for a while um, and they they were talking about that and the material they used or referred to to quite an extent came from Doreen Virtues uh, sets of oracle cards and things uh, that she did on this material so it's like it starts off somewhere and I had to really because of this article that I mentioned just now I've got uh, poplar buds that I picked up that's why I'm waving <laughs> in, in the screen now and then um, from this article I actually learned that the whole thing about the ascended masters and the violet flame and all that originates with Helena Blavatsky who is another character out of you know a century ago at least more than a century ago I think who had her own way of going about things and I also looked up uh, Helena's uh, birth chart both of them and she was a very powerful woman I think and about both of them a lot can be said where I think they were actually opposites in a lot of ways where Helena Blavatsky was a really independent strong-willed that's obvious from her chart she was a powerhouse you would not have gotten away from her if she wanted you and she she would not she would she was gonna do her own thing no matter what so that was her style for Elizabeth Prophet I think the case is more like she uh, got involved because she was attracted to certain ways of thinking and maybe certain practices she got attracted to certain people and involved with them in certain activities and all that and then she got stuck in there which is something that happens to people and this was in the early 70s I think that she was for a long time for decades really she was involved with this so what you then get is the if you read the stuff on the organization that she was a part of now I tend to go like okay this is bad and I don't like those people and I'm gonna chuck the book away again that I bought but I don't necessarily have to so this is an appeal also to you <laughs> where is if there it's difficult because she's writing in this kind of a high-handed self-assured way like being this um, I don't know like this angelic character that she's supposed to be being to be representing which is uh, that's a bit of a, a tall order that's the right word right for a person to be representing a very much higher consciousness I think what I'm interested in basically is whether the technique or the meditation style will still work sorry for the airplane there's a little propeller airplane passing right over us it's been very much very bothering for me because I'm um, I'm kind of into this violet flame thing among many other things like you know I'm you know I'm, I'm always willing to try all sorts of meditation techniques and vibrational stuff is really cool I like it expansion of consciousness is cool I want all that but I don't want people to uh, to lord it over any other people anybody you know and I think that's certainly what both of those women really did and they were stimulated and um, what you might call it um, supported definitely by their groups of people and they had that's where the power came from and then afterwards you can say okay so this and that and the other were was they were wrong they, they actually the actions they did uh, the, the things they did and the the actions they participated in uh, aren't always 
consistent with you know a vision of peace and inner peace and all that kind of stuff that we want nowadays so fallible you know human nature stuff like that so you have to be careful what you read and how you read it and that's what I'm trying to say here basically so that was on my mind um, two more progress report can be done shortly probably you know in a couple of days or so I'll do, I'll do that because that will not necessarily be so much a progress report as a description of one versus the other what's what's happening when you go into tumo what happens to the shakti and all that uh, there's a lot that can be said it's really interesting and that at least is my personal direct experience that I'm you know putting out there for you guys so um, I think I'm gonna leave it at that for now thank you for watching as always and um, I will be back soon okay thank you see you soon